Before we go play with the options that we can pass to the request, I want to show you exactly the different values that they can take. So right now I am on the HTTP guide page. So if you go to angular.io slash guide slash HTTP, you should land on this page. And I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and what we're looking for is this, the request data from a server. So you can see the options and you can pass headers, observe, params, report progress, response type and with credentials. We've already looked at the headers and the params. Now let's go ahead and look at the observe. And if you look down, it says the observed options specify how much of the response to return. So what this means is that whenever we send the request and the response comes back, Angular client look at this option to determine if it's supposed to return HTTP event or the body of the request or the entire HTTP response. By default, it's just gonna return the body of the response. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's look at events and response and see what that means. So I'm gonna go back to the code. By the way, the HTTP params and the HTTP headers, they're coming from the same library. So they're coming from angular slash common slash HTTP. So the same package where the HTTP client is coming from. But for now, let's go ahead and remove those because we're not using them. And I'm also gonna remove this option here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the definition again. So if we go inside of this, you can see by default, the observe is set to body, which means that I'm gonna copy this which means that whenever the response comes back, it's only gonna extract the body of the response, which is what it's doing here. It's gonna extract the body and then deserialize it to this type or to this shape that we defined here. So we can go ahead and change that. So I'm gonna go here and then pass in the observe and I'm just gonna go ahead and change it to something else. So if I do this, so by default, it's already body, but we have a few options that we can pass. And the first one is events. And once I do this, you can see that it's complaining. And if I put my mouse over it, you can see that the type doesn't match anymore because it's returning an HTTP event that's gonna eventually resolve to user's array. So I can just copy this and paste it here. So what this means is that whenever we send this request, we're gonna watch for the HTTP events that are gonna come back to us. And eventually this HTTP events inside of it, whenever it's resolved, inside of it's gonna have an array of users. So let's go ahead in the browser and let's take a look at this and see what that looks like. So if I go here and then refresh, you can see we have the entire response, okay? Because we don't have anything that takes a lot of time, like we don't have any upload or download or anything like that. So we only get the response back, but I'm gonna show you how this is useful because I'm gonna show you an example whenever we try to upload files to a server. So we look at this, now we have the entire response coming back to us. And inside of the body, you can see we have our array of users. Okay, so that's the difference between the events and the response.